all right what's up guys uh today we have this 335i here that i picked up for super cheap um we've been trying to track down this 30ff code uh last episode i guess we figured it out that we were getting a false reading from the map sensor uh they had i guess they had just failed or something so we replaced the map sensor and now we don't get any 30ff code however guys we are not reaching our target boost we're at about we're supposed to, our target boost is 18 psi and we're only reaching about 16 16.2 so we definitely have some sort of a boost leak so today i'm gonna be showing you guys how to properly do a boost leak down test like step by step i usually don't do videos like this but i'm gonna show you guys step by step how to find yourself a boost leak so the crazy thing is that this whole time i had a bad map sensor i actually ended up replacing the one on the intake and the one on the charge pipe with oem ones from fcp euro they are made by continental but same thing um so i made sure to put those two new ones so now i'm getting proper readings so you always got to make sure your map sensors are good first of all maybe give them a quick little cleaning with some map sensor cleaner and then once you're good to go then we're going to do this but don't just be throwing parts at it i mean there's certain ways you can like diagnose things like for example if your boost solenoid is already old replace them but this is how you check if you have a 30ff code or if you have some sort of a boost leak which you can check on mhd you can check your target boost and what your boost is actually at so this is how we do it the only downside to doing this is that you will need an air compressor as we can see we have an air compressor here it could be a little one a big one it doesn't matter as long as you have an air compressor so once you get your hands on an air compressor you will need to stop by home depot get yourself some pvc i guess like butts or ends you know these caps these specifically are one and a half inch so get yourself some one and a half inch pvc caps and then just insert them they insert perfectly fine like perfectly snug and then tighten them down as much as you can with the clamp right there clamp right here and then on one of them you are going to need to put a one of these uh fittings an air fitting just drill a hole screw it in pretty easy to do and then once you do that you can just directly connect it like this end right here can directly connect into the pvc um you can just regulate it using your compressor's regulator as we can see the tank pressure is 120 but the, the air coming out is about 40 psi now what i did is i put a gauge in here i bought this off of amazon you can like retrofit it yourself but it's not necessary i just like having it that way i can monitor the psi while in the engine bay and i don't have to be turning to the air compressor like i said you set your compressor to about 40 psi you definitely do not want to be pressurizing this thing to 100 psi because it will blow up or something's going to pop um and before you do that make sure to get the the hose that comes out of this inlet and either cap it off or you can see i got some hose pliers and just clamped it off because if you don't clamp this off or cap this off you will be getting 30 psi going through here into your catch can or going directly into your crankcase and you do not want that because you will crack your your valve cover gasket um and also remove your oil cap because um you do not want to pressurize your valve cover because you could push out your rear main seal pop some oil pan gaskets crack this you just do not want to pressurize the oil system so i like to i like to loosen the oil cap leave it loose leave it like that in case we do get pressure in here it can just escape so yeah once you cap that off cap this off make your little adapter you can now start pressurizing the system which we will do right here now we can clearly hear we are pressurizing and like i said i have a gauge here so we can start seeing it climb up we're about 20 psi we should start going closer to 30. but anywho the next thing you want to do once it's pressurized give it a few seconds you can actually hear boost leaks most of the time if they are pretty obvious and if they're not so obvious then you might have to get some soapy water like here this is just soapy water this is not wheel cleaner or nothing this is just soapy water um but i can clearly hear something coming from here but regardless you want to spray down all the most common places for example charge pipe diverter valves uh intake just try to spray as much as you can and go maybe piece by piece so i sprayed here let's inspect it no leaks whatsoever 
the leaks was over, over there and then spray them over here let me move this out of the way let me move this out of the way all right and then spray like your map sensor see if there's anything going on there uh actually i think i see a small little bubble forming at the base of that map sensor but regardless i really hear it coming from over here so let me spray over here and i don't know if you guys can hear that so you can see some bubbles starting to form right around the area so we definitely have some sort of a boost leak Coming from the intake, my best guess is going to be the intake gaskets, so we will have to probably replace that. That was pretty obvious to find, but we can also look for some smaller ones. Spray around the area a little more. See if you can spot some more boost leaks. Also, ob obviously, go down to your intercooler connections. Go down here to your intercooler connections and spray as well. Spray everywhere that gets charged up. So, for example, your outlets right here. Spray everything, and you will start seeing bubbles pop up if there is a boost leak. But like I said, if it's a really obvious one, like, for example, the one we have going on right here with the intake, you will be able to hear it, which I can. I guess now the soapy water should be able to find all the smaller boost leaks. Let's keep spraying around. This is not a boost leak, but we can see how it's forming right here in case it was a boost leak. Like for example here as well, but this side doesn't matter because this is, this is the the intake side that sucks in air. We need to worry about the charge side. So like if it was leaking through here, or if it was leaking through here, or maybe even on the intake, if it was leaking through there, that would be a big issue. Like our biggest issue so far would definitely be the intake gasket or maybe the intake manifold itself is cracked. So we're going to remove the intake, see what's up with it and go from there all right guys so i took off the intake manifold as we can see i don't see anything crazy obvious with the intake gasket like nothing's cracked nothing's torn um, or pinched or anything which is crazy maybe it's just worn out and flat as we can see this side right here looks kind of flat maybe a little you know worn out um, or maybe it wasn't properly torqued who knows but other than that I do have an extra set of these L-ring intake gaskets, very solid uh, gaskets. Uh, so I'm going to re be replacing them, swapping them over, torquing everything down to spec, and then we're going to repressurize the system. And hopefully this fixes our boost leak issue. Uh, quick little inspection of the intake valves, because I guess it's a pretty common issue on these N54s. How so, gummed up they are, they don't look too bad. But I have seen uh, worse. Yeah, we're going to replace these gaskets out with these and repressurize the system. See how it goes. All right, everything is hooked back on and we can see no more leaks coming from there. So that's pretty much a fix. And whatever your issue may be, it could be, I don't know, leaking from this O-ring, which is pretty common. Uh, that's how you pinpoint it instead of just throwing parts at it you'll be able to pinpoint exactly what has failed sometimes the clamps are just loose um, but just spray a bunch of water and then wherever there's uh, bubbles coming out or you can hear uh, the boost leaking out then there's your issue and yeah hopefully this helps somebody out helps you find your 30 ff code one thing for sure that i've noticed is that if you've replaced everything there's no boost leaks no nothing your waste gates are good, your solenoids are good, it is most likely going to be your map sensor or your uh, boost sensor, the one that goes on the intake or the one that goes on the the charge pipe, either one of those, because it will be it'll also give a false reading causing a 30FF code. But yeah, that's our fix.